Hello, I'm Bruce Zimmerman, and this is the Open Line Garden Show podcast for this week. Some new perennials that we will find in your garden centers for 2015. The first one I'd like to cover is a hosta, and as you all know, I do like hostas. This one's kind of cool. It's neat in the fact that, A, it's called hideout. Two, it's a miniature. Uh, This is one that can be used in miniature landscaping, also in fairy gardens. It is uh, going to be presented and and growing and put into garden centers by Valley Brook Gardens. So you will see it throughout Ontario. It's hardy to zone three, but it does grow best in part shade or shade. It's a hosta with wavy leaves and a prominent white centers and, of course, a thin green margins. And it only gets four to six inches tall. So just think, this is a little guy that you need to put somewhere where it can be seen, not trampled on, and yet still up front so that you won't lose it or ignore it or just walk right past. So take a look at this one, but positioning on this one is going to be key. Yes, you're going to need all the good, rich, moist soils that's well-drained, but always moist, uh, like all hostas. But again, it's that part shade to shade that's going to be required. Now, the next one is uh, being grown by Mori Nurseries, and it's called Whoopsie Daisy Shasta Daisy. Now, Leucanthium superbum whoopsie daisy. Every time I see this, I think of the movie Notting Hill, where they're breaking into this private garden in London, and uh, he can't get over the fence, but she can, and he goes whoopsie daisy. And uh, every time I see this, and every time I say it, it always reminds me of that scene in the movie. At least it's a gardening scene, so. It's, I guess, okay. This is a new variety. It's an improvement on snowcap. Whoopsie Daisy Shasta Daisy is neat. And by that, I mean compact, rounded, dense. It has dark green foliage and lots and lots of white Shasta Daisy flowers from early to mid-summer. It only gets 15 inches tall. It's hardy to zone 5. This one is going to be surprising you in the fact that it looks like a daisy mum, but it's of course in bloom in the summertime. So you know how you get those lovely mums in the fall that are so nice and neat and all different kinds and colors. Well, that's what this is going to look like in your garden. Remember the chasta daisies do like lots of sunlight, moisture, and of course, they don't need a lot of fertilizer, but they do like an organic-based soil. The next one that I'd like to point out is, is a Marnarda. This is the Sugar Buzz series. It's uh, Cherry Pops Bee Bomb and Grape Gumball Bee Bomb. Two great Monardas, also known as Bee Bombs. This is two of them that have very strong colors. Uh, The Cherry Pops Bee Bomb flowers are two and a half inches. They're cherry red from mid to late summer. They'll grab your attention for sure as will the grape gumball, both with the dark green foliage, both resistant to powdery mildew. Its forms is a little more upright and well-branched stems. There is an an aromatic scent to them. Of course, like all bee bombs, they attract hummingbirds, butterflies, and bees to the landscape, and it's hardy to zone four, and it's being grown and sold into the garden centers by Mori Nurseries. Now, the next one is called Rocket Man. Yeah, I know, from another movie. Okay. Porovskia. Now, Porovskia or Russian Sage, I am not a fan of, never have been, and I was swore I never would be because they get tall, they get floppy, and just when they're supposed to be doing just great, 
well, they sort of will go over and they grow that way. Well, this one is an improvement. It's not supposed to flop over. It's very stiff, hence the name Rocket Man. It's a little shorter overall in height as well. It's only going to be about three feet tall. It's got the silvery green foliage, and it's topped with the large, fluffy, textured lavender blue flowers from midsummer into fall. Um, hardy to zone four, so we've got lots of hardiness there, of course, as well. And it's going to be grown by Walter's Gardens. Now, all of those are excellent plants to add to any garden, but please make sure you go and add certain ones to the right conditions for the best success. Remember, their height as well as their positioning will be key to being the most effective in your garden. The next one is Selvia Color Spires Crystal Blue. Uh, this is a perennial Selvia. Uh, there are some of them out there. I'm not overly thrilled with these guys, but uh, this one seems to be a lot hardier, a lot tougher, and it is going to be a proven winners and growing by Walters Gardens as well. It is deer resistant, drought resistant, and low maintenance. So this does have some aspects that we should look for in many perennials because the more perennials we put into our gardens the more work we seem to be adding to our workload so crystal blue violet riot and pink dawn are three colors and they are gorgeous they will rebloom if they're cut back they grow 22 inches tall and 24 inches wide so take a look and position these properly. The Sedum uh, Lemon Jade. This is a stone crop. This is the autumn stone crop. Like many of the stone crops, they're easy to grow. It's a proven winners, again from Walter's Gardens. It's an upright sedum uh, with bright citron yellow flowers. It's completely covered with gray green foliage in early fall. And the cold weather sets in and the seed heads take on a rosy peach tone. So it's got some more interest in the fall as well. Uh, it's a very low maintenance perennial. Uh, lemon jade is going to be tight, compact, with clean foliage all through the growing season. 18 inches tall, 28 inches wide, and hardy to zone 3. The next one is Veronica uh, Magic Show or Enchanted Indigo. Now, Enchanted Indigo is, Veronica is also known as Speedwell, okay? But I like the I like Veronica much better than Speedwell. Now, in the 2014 California Spring Trials, the, the growers just took a great shine to these plants. Because of the blooms in summer and fall, and that means color. And color when we sometimes have a hard time getting color into our gardens. And often the annuals are starting to show, oh, they're a little tired. The deep royal blue flowers on the Veronica Enchanted Indigo, is not, they stand up above the bright green foliage. The foliage is slightly glossy for very many months. And you want to make sure that in its neat and compact habit, yes, you're going to see the flowers, but it does need the sun. It can be used in containers and in the landscape. It grows 16 to 18 inches tall and wide. Hardy to zone 4. Again, proven winners and Walters Gardens. Now, there are some others. And there are some of my more favorite perennials that I do. But there's also one here I'm not thrilled with. But anyways, here's one of the ones I really like as a group. And that's the Coreopsis. Now, this one is known as Leading Lady. It's um, going to be relatively seed sterile. 
uh, with mi high mildew resistance. That means all the things that you basically don't like about Coreopsis, this one seems to not have. Hardy to zone four, got its hardiness. Flowers the first year, like that too. Uh, large flowers, but plants are compact. There are three in this series, Charlize, Lauren, and Sophia. And they're all from Bartel. So take a look for those in your garden center this coming spring. Carex. Most people call this a grass. It is actually a sedge. It is, this one is a Everillo sedge. It is a bright mound of bright lime green leaves that turn yellow gold as they get older. This is a plant that you can use in containers, edges of a rock garden, best in shade or part shade. A grass that grows in the shade. Oh, too bad we couldn't have this one for a lawn. Again, 16 to 18 inches tall, hardy to zone 5, and of course being introduced by Valley Brook. Now, the Dianthus hedgehog. I grew this one in my garden this year. It um, is doing very, very well. It was introduced by Valley Brook Gardens. And every once in a while, I get plants to sort of test, try out, and I am impressed. Do you know how hard it is sometimes to get a Dianthus to establish in your garden? This one never looked back. Planted in improved, high organic soil, but still, basically, the original soil was clay. So, doing very well. What makes this one stand out is the fact that the leaves are edged in white and they don't burn. Full sun, hardy to zone three. It has that uh, hot pink semi-double flowers. It's sort of a low grassy mound like most of the little uh, dianthus. And this one is going to be known as dianthus edge hog, not hedge, edge hog because it is so neat and compact as well. I'm impressed with this one. I like this one. I'm glad I've got it in my garden. I'm skipping over the Gallardia simply because I don't like Gallardias. Okay, blanket flower. But I will tell you this. They are drought resistant. Once they're established, they grow in the sun. They're tough. And, uh, uh, well, so try it and see. I still don't like them. Helleborus tutu is another one. And of course, as you all know, I love Helleborus, Hucarellas, and Hucaras. And uh, if it isn't a hosta, it should be one of those three. Helleborus, this is an evergreen perennial. It has uh, medium pink, double anemone style centered crowns that have tufted yellow stamens. It does best in part shade. We like that. Zone 4, hardy, no problem. And it is one of the earliest to flower. So there you go. Helleborus tutu. T-U-T-U. That's how you spell tutu. Hucarella honey rose. Now, honey rose hucarella has the pinkest leaf of all the hucarellas on the market. It's coral rose in the spring, sable in the summer, has dark veins and an intricate patterns that sort of make it stand, the foliage really stand out. Compact habit, it's only eight inches tall. Uh, white flowers in the summer, typical of the hucarellas or hucaras. Compact habit, I like that. Eight inches tall, yeah, not bad. Cold, heat, and humidity tolerant in part shade to shade. It was bred by Terra Nova Nurseries, being introduced by Blooms of Bressingham, and Hardy to Zone 4. Nice. Hookera, Berry Timeless. Now, Berry Timeless is an ever-blooming with heat and humidity tolerance. We live in Niagara, so we need that summer heat and humidity that'll get you here then this is probably one of the hookeras you want to consider. It's pretty, okay? 
It's got uh, lots of light pink flowers, which change as they mature into a deep rose. They will dry right in place on the stems, like status. That's a little different. They are going to remember, I don't like hookah flowers, and I cut most of them off. The whole stem, the whole scape comes off. I just can't stand it. There's a couple of hookahs in my garden that I do like the flowers to, but the rest, they all get snipped. I see a hookah scape coming. It's gone. The It will continually bloom from early summer to frost. It uh, is slightly silvered mint green foliage as it uh, gets going in late season. Clump is compact. It goes well in containers or in the front of the border. It's only six inches tall. The flowers are white, 18 to 20 inches across, hardy to zone four, and it's from Walter's Garden. So there you go. Some great hookahs, perennials, and many others that you should be looking for in your garden centers this spring 2015. This is the Open Line Garden Show podcast for this week.